Jerome Bixby's It's a Good Life is a disturbing exploration of power, fear, and the dark side of human nature. The story is set in the small town of Peaksville, Ohio, which has been isolated from the rest of the world by a three-year-old boy named Anthony Fremont. Anthony has godlike powers, capable of transforming reality according to his whims. The town's residents live in a constant state of terror, afraid to even think negatively, as Anthony can read minds and punish anyone who displeases him. The story's primary tension arises from the townspeople's fear of Anthony. They must continuously feign happiness and satisfaction to avoid provoking his wrath. This enforced positivity is a grim commentary on the nature of power and control. Bixby uses Anthony's character to illustrate the dangers of absolute power, particularly when it is wielded by someone who lacks maturity and moral understanding. Anthony's powers are not inherently evil, but his lack of empathy and understanding makes them terrifying. The adults in Peaksville are powerless against a child who cannot comprehend the consequences of his actions, creating a sense of helplessness that pervades the story. The story also delves into the concept of isolation, both physical and psychological. Peaksville's severance from the rest of the world mirrors the townspeople's emotional isolation from each other. They are forced to suppress their true feelings and thoughts, creating a superficial and oppressive environment. This isolation leads to a breakdown of community and human connection, as everyone is too afraid to express themselves honestly. Bixby highlights how fear can erode social bonds and reduce individuals to mere survival instincts, stripping away the humanity that binds them together. The narrative's horror is heightened by its focus on the mundane details of everyday life in Peaksville. The townspeople's attempts to maintain a semblance of normalcy, such as the forced singing of happy songs and the pretense of enjoying their bleak existence, contrast sharply with the underlying terror they feel. This juxtaposition creates an eerie atmosphere, as the reader is constantly aware of the fragility of their world. The horror is not in what Anthony does, but in the anticipation of what he might do, a fear that hangs over every interaction and every moment. Bixby also explores the theme of denial in the story. The townspeople's refusal to acknowledge the reality of their situation is a coping mechanism that allows them to survive. They convince themselves that it is a good life, despite the overwhelming evidence to the contrary. This denial is a form of self-deception that highlights the lengths people will go to in order to avoid confronting the truth. It also underscores the power of fear in shaping reality, as the townspeople's collective denial is necessary to placate Anthony and avoid his wrath. In the story's climax, Bixby offers a chilling commentary on the consequences of unchecked power. When one of the townspeople, Dan Hollis, finally snaps and expresses his true feelings, Anthony transforms him into something horrible and then banishes him to the cornfield, a fate that is worse than death. This moment underscores the totality of Anthony's control and the futility of resistance. The story ends with the townspeople reaffirming their false belief that it's a good life, a stark reminder of the power of fear and the human capacity for self-delusion. It's a Good Life is a masterful exploration of the themes of power, fear, and denial. Bixby uses the character of Anthony Fremont to demonstrate the dangers of unchecked power, particularly when it is in the hands of someone who lacks moral understanding. The story's atmosphere of pervasive fear and isolation is a commentary on the corrosive effects of power and the ways in which people cope with oppressive circumstances.